Greystones. A town built on the skeletons of Irish rebels, or as I like to call it, British Bray. The people of Greystones have high self-esteem because they base their sense of identity on how many coffee shops they have. 19. The happy pair of the colonial overlords of Greystones who control the town with their get up and go attitude and infectiously annoying positivity. It's believed the happy pair single-handedly appropriated the dry robe and made it an acceptable item of clothing to wear without getting viciously attacked. The happy pair get up at 5 o'clock every morning, but most importantly, they let you know about it, and if you don't swim in the sea with them at sunrise, you have to move to a different part of Wicklow, instead of fake Wicklow, which is what Greystones really is, because no real part of Wicklow would ever have a sauna and a burrito bar. Joker's chipper is the only thing that makes Greystonians feel erect. Many natives have taken their own life into their hands by sacrificing the cost of a taxi ride home to wander the treacherous streets of Bray after a night out, charting the journey towards Joker's for what they call a tasty roll, a local Greystonian delicacy. Former teenage nerd and current political nerd Simon Harris can often be seen wearing a tight blue shirt outside this chipper, drunkenly howling at the moon and freestyle rapping about sexy landlords to the sound of a silent bowron that keeps playing in his head. Greystones has the worst pub to people ratio in the entire country because Protestants don't believe in alcoholism. Of those who do partake in the ancient ritual of binge drinking, most of them are boring drunk rich dads under the influence of affluence who get gargled and tell their kids who's getting what in the will. This ceremony usually occurs in Mrs. Robinson's, a great place to visit if you love espresso martinis and hate personal space. There's a gaping hole in Greystones, and it's not the open mouth of a wine drunk housewife trying to eat the leftovers of the avocado spread she gave her poodle so she can line her stomach before picking up her kids from school. Oh, wait, sorry, it is. But another gaping hole exists where the old cinema used to be. When the Ormond Cinema closed in 2007, Greystones were left without a place to be entertained and had to start talking to each other. But instead, they discovered impulsively creating coffee shops and different types of exotic jam was an excellent way to build a wall around themselves and never let anyone in. When the mystery of the Ormond is explored a bit deeper, we find out that Greystonians don't really miss it because barely any of them went, which is why it closed down. People from Greystones hate watching movies, unless it's about them. Going to the cinema takes away from valuable time they could spend talking about themselves. Namaste.